In this example here, we're going to have a look at a, the big gazumbo of all, all combinations as far as dollar hybrids go. Uh, it's a heterozygous cross, so it involves crossing individuals who are heterozygous for both um, both traits, um, for colour and hairiness in our gorgs here. And what I'm going to do is write out the uh, gametes first. Um, hopefully, you guys can get pretty quick at working these out. Uh, with a heterozygous individual, they have big G with big H, big G with small H, or small G with big H, small G with small H. And we, you know, we can draw the lines and work it out, but um, hopefully we can get to the stage where we can write those out pretty quickly. Um, and here we go. And the, the same for this one here, it's, going, it's the same, it's exactly the same genotype, so it's going to, the individual is going to produce the same sort of gametes. And, uh, um, the reason it can produce different combinations of gametes is because they're sorted out independently, and that that the theory of independent assortment. Now these gametes get written into a Punnett square here um, along the side. Um, try and be as neat as I can, um, and we write them out uh, down the side and. We're going to use the whole Punnett square for this one, and so it's going to get uh, quite full and quite busy. Uh, being structured and a bit methodical about it is going to probably get you the best results and make sure we don't get confused. So there I've got my gametes written out. I'm now going to go through and fill out these squares, reminding you again that the, those squares represent the, uh, the, the genotypes of the offspring or the potential genotypes of the offspring. So let's go through this first one here. Um, we're going to pick up these alleles or chromosomes from one parent and these ones from the other. Big G, big G, big H, big H. So we're getting the G from here, the G from there, H from there, H from there. Moving down the line, a big G from this parent, a big G from that parent. They're going to be homozygous dominant for green. A small G and a big H. And I'm going to write these out, rem reminding you again, I try and write the dominant one first just to keep a bit structured about it. As I move down, big G, small G, big H, big H. Okay. And, uh, and as we move through, we just do the same thing all the way through. Now, bing, bang, boom. Hopefully through magic, I've been able to put all these in there. And I've, I've uh, done this just to make it a lot neater uh, in case you're trying to follow the problem. Um, and, and help you out. Now, my writing does get a bit messy writing on this as well. I'm going to write out the genotype and phenotype ratios now. Um, and these are, these are going to take up quite a bit of space because I've got lots of different options. Um, so for the genotype ratios, I need to work through and tick them off sort of one at a time. Um, I'm marking a little dot in the corner there. Um, that little dot is really just helping me uh, keep track of which ones I've uh, checked off. Now, I've got one of those individuals. Uh, which is homozygous for both. I look down the line and I now have got one, two of them. And you might need to scan around a little bit um, when, you, when you start off to try and work out uh, how many of each that you have. Um, next individual here, I've got one that's heterozygous there, two of those matching ones, two that are big G, big H. There we go. Um, looks like I've got one of those. Small H, small H. Uh, working my way through, as I because oh, I've structured the, my gametes up there, I can see actually see some some patterns developing here. And these four individuals uh, have all got the same heterozygous for uh, both characteristics: heterozygous for hairy and heterozygous for green. Um, these two individuals are the same, and I'm taking up a bit of room here. Two of those, okay, homozygous for one condition, heterozygous for the other, and I've probably got one left here, or two left here. Um, and the very last individual here who is homozygous for both conditions. Okay, now it's worth going through. Sometimes it's even worth adding up your numbers to make sure you've, you've got uh, all 16 in the square and counting that you've, you've got enough there. Um, 
and, and and just having a bit of a look through. Um, the next we're going to look at phenotypes. We're really looking at what they're going to look like. So the first individual we're going to look for is someone who is green and hairy. All right. Um, let's see how many of them we have. Now the first individual here I have is green and hairy. So I've got one, two, three. They're going to appear green and hairy. Got five individuals who are going to be green and hairy, and these four heterozygous individuals are also going to be green and hairy. Gives me nine green hairy individuals. I'm now going to have a look and see how many I have that are green and not hairy. I'm just going to abbreviate it a bit because I'm running out of room. Uh, green and not hairy, two there. Um, Green and not hairy there. I've got another three, uh, three in total, sorry. When I look to see how many I got that are yellow and hairy. Um, let's see, I've got two that are yellow and hairy there. One that is yellow and hairy there, three. And finally, how many I have that are yellow and not hairy will be one. Right. And that's giving me a ratio that is nine to three to one. And that nine to three to three to one ratio is something that we um, that we see in any heterozygous cross uh, when we're dealing with dihybrid. You remember the monohybrid cross with three to one. Well this is I suppose factorized or something like that um, and we end up with this this ratio, so that's something that you'll you'll see a bit of a pattern with. Okay, good luck with the dihybrid cross. Take them slow. Um, pay lots of attention. Check your stuff as you go. Um, I reckon those little dots and underlines sort of help me. Uh, good luck with them.